the first Super Heavy booster rolls to the pad. Starlink will be riding along for Starship's orbital mission. SpaceX launches 88 satellites at once. Elon spars with ULA. And we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. It's been a very busy week for SpaceX. On Saturday, a mount adapter was placed on the test stand A in preparation for the arrival of the first Super Heavy booster. BN3, later called Booster 2, now labeled Booster 3 again, completed stacking just a few days later, was moved out of the high bay and transported down Highway 4 to the launch site. Shortly after that, it was placed onto the test stand. Elon tweeted it will be used for ground tests. They're changing much of the design from 3 to 4. This one, Booster 3, was very hard to build. Expect especially rapid evolutions in first 10 or so boosters and first 30 or so starships. It appears these ground tests could begin as early as Tuesday next week. In the meantime, progress continues on Starship Super Heavy's orbital launch and integration tower. On Sunday, Section 6 was stacked on top of the steel monolith, and the next day, Section 7 was relocated to the launch site as well, and then added to the tower on Thursday. And more work continues around the tower as well. With the staging area being constructed, support beams have also been connected to the legs of the launch mount, and whatever this thing is, probably something important. RGV also snapped a pic of SN20's thrust dome resting next to SN21's. Both have Raptor mounts for both sea level and vacuum engines. A few more sea levels were spotted arriving at Starbase this week, as well as a Raptor vac. That Elon confirmed will be equipped to SN20 for its orbital flight. It can achieve 378 seconds of specific impulse, so over 380 seconds with improvements down the road. As we discussed last week, SpaceX is targeting July for this first orbital launch of a fully stacked Starship Super Heavy. But this week during an interview with MWC, Elon hinted that July is far from certain. So we're, we're hoping to do our first uh, orbital launch attempt in the next, um, next few months. Uh, an orbital capable booster and an orbital capable ship and the uh, overall launch site will all be ready within the next uh, month or so. Following it up with a tweet to further clarify that July is more of an aspirational target for internal purposes only. Quote, there is the internal goal if things go right, which needs to be aggressive. Obviously, some things will not go right internally, and there will be external issues too. That said, I think we can stack an orbital ship on an orbital booster in July. And you know I can get behind that. The month of July just started, and SN20 is already more than halfway complete. The mission of all of this is to get millions of tons to Mars. To do that requires R, rapidly reusable rockets. Quick, somebody send Elon one of our Jolly Rocket shirts. Available using the link in the description below. But why are rapidly reusable rockets so important? Well, because it's all about cost. Taking a lot of mass to Mars for colonization is expensive. You want to be flying used as much as possible. And this week, Elon gave us an estimate on how much a reusable Starship Super Heavy flight will cost. But the crazy thing is that if things go as according to plan, we'll have a rocket with a 100 ton to orbit capability that uh, has a marginal cost per launch of around $2 million, which is less than our, our little Falcon 1 rocket that we started out with. However, Elon does seem to be having at least some regrets building his Mars rocket so big. In retrospect, less than a 9 meter diameter might have been wise. There comes a point, about 100 tons of payload capacity, where it is no longer clear that cost per ton to orbit improves with a larger rocket. He said this in response to an inquiry about a possible quadruple-sized starship that he teased to us over a year ago. So sadly, I guess we can kiss that idea goodbye. SpaceX has filed with the FCC to place multiple Starlink terminals on Starship and its Super Heavy booster for its first orbital flight in the coming months. Quote, to communicate with SpaceX's Starlink satellite constellation, this is a logical extension of SpaceX's existing authorization to demonstrate Starlink operations on Starship suborbital flights. SpaceX intends to demonstrate high-date radar communications with Starship and the Super Heavy booster on the ground at the launch site in Starbase, Texas, during launch, during booster recovery, in-flight, and during re-entry. Starlink can provide unprecedented volumes of telemetry and enable communications during atmospheric re-entry when ionized plasma around the spacecraft inhibits conventional telemetry frequencies. These tests will demonstrate Starlink's ability to improve the efficiency and safety of future orbital spaceflight missions. Multiple Starlink terminals will be fitted to each vehicle to ensure a clear view of the Starlink satellite constellation through the Starship flight profile. The terminals will use the same antenna and communications electronics as SpaceX's previously authorized consumer terminals, but with a revised enclosure and mounting that is suitable for the mission profile. 
Elon got all giddy when the simultaneous active user count of Starlink services reached the strategically important threshold of 69,420 on Saturday night. He also wrote that all 72 orbital planes will be activated in August, plus many other improvements, enabling global coverage. However, polar bears and penguins will have to wait another six months. <laughs> Suckers. On Tuesday, SpaceX was poised to launch their second dedicated rideshare mission from Cape Canaveral, but a wayward heli entered the range less than a minute from liftoff, sending Elon's temperature into orbit instead. LD, this is RCN. Countdown range is no go. Repeat range is no go. The keep out zone is unreasonably gigantic. There is simply no way that humanity can become a spacefaring civilization without major regulatory reform. The current system is broken. The following day, however, SpaceX did manage to launch this particular Falcon 9 rocket for the eighth time, successfully placing all 85 customer satellites into a rare polar orbit, plus three more Starlink sets. It was also rare, yet satisfying, to see the booster make a landing on the Florida coast at landing zone one. Elon following up that the super heavy booster will not have an entry burn like Falcon 9 does to slow its velocity. Delta V is shifted more to the ship, so booster entry dynamic pressure and heating is lower. Elon also tweeted that refurbishment work between Falcon flights is becoming less and less. Starship and Super Heavy will have zero refurbishment between flights, and this prompted a friendly war of words between himself and Tori Bruno, the CEO of ULA. Elon claimed ULA would be dead as a doornail without the DOD's two launch provider requirement, it chaps his ass because it diverts money away from making life multiplanetary. Tory followed up with his own claims that competition is healthy for the industry and customers. And yet more drama reemerges between SpaceX and Biden's Department of Justice. A couple of months ago, I told you about a lawsuit filed against the company by Fabian Hunter through the DOJ's Immigrant and Employees' Rights section, who is accusing SpaceX of discrimination after they inquired about his citizenship status during a job interview. Hutter is a U.S. resident, but is a citizen of Austria and Canada. SpaceX has refused to comply with the DOJ subpoena for internal hiring documents, but on Wednesday this week, a federal judge ruled the company must provide the records within 21 days. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. On Wednesday, Virgin Orbit successfully placed their second rocket into, well, orbit, the first one to carry customer satellites. The 70-foot missile rode under the wing of a 747, nicknamed Cosmic Girl, after taking off from California. Then, at 35,000 feet, a button in the mothership's cockpit was pressed, and the rocket dropped from the wing before lighting its engine and soaring to space, then staging and lighting again to reach orbit, and finally deploying its payloads. Richard Branson's other company, Virgin Galactic, also announced this week that their CEO and five other crew members will be heading to space on a suborbital joyride aboard their space plane, Spaceship Two, July 11th beating out Jeffy's suborbital ride to space aboard New Shepard on July 20th. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thanks for tuning in. And thank you, eccentric members and patrons, for supporting the channel. Do have a nominal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed.